John Calipari at Arkansas. Kentucky needs a coach. Ashley Hodge, Sikkim 365 owner, one of the owners with Brian Etheridge and also Colt Barber and a college basketball insider joins us on 365 Sports. Well, here we go again, Ashley. Um, you know, it's amazing to me. Baylor University sure seems like they have a lot of coaches that other people want once they have an opening. It's not just Scott Drew, but others. But your thoughts about this one compared to Louisville? Yeah, I think it's a more attractive job than Louisville. No question about it. Um, I think it's uh, one that any college basketball coach is going to consider and at least think about it in their head. You know, I, I think he has everything at Baylor that he needs uh, to compete for national championships. Obviously, he did it three years ago. And, uh, you know, he's been top three, you know, a, a three seed or better each of the years following that. But um, I, I think with this uh, – Louisville flirtation or whatever you want to call it. I, I don't think he was ever seriously considering Louisville, but I think, um, you know, Mac Rose was very proactive. And uh, from what I've been told, you know, this uh, new deal that he's uh, either agreed to or signed, I don't, I don't know if he signed it yet. Uh, I don't think it matters too much, I, you know, with, with the type of guy he is. I think if he's agreed to it, he'll, he'll follow through on it. But, um, you know, it's going to make him one of the top five. Uh, the staff's going to be one of the top five staffs as far as compensation. Uh, he'll have a top five NIL budget. Uh, those are the things he needs to compete for future national championships. We know how great Foster is as far as a home court advantage. That was a big deal. Got that done. And uh, he set up, you know, to have a really high percentage uh, winning percentage at home. So the only argument I can really make is, you know, there's some advantages with Big Blue Nation that, you know, would be more of a neutral court advantage. Uh, they travel, they're, they're crazy, rapid fan base, uh, you know, rapid fan base, I, sh I should say. But, you know, that comes with some uh, warts as well. The pressure is higher. You know, you, you go to the round of 32 three years in a row, you might be on the hot seat in Kentucky. It's, it's not that big of a deal at Baylor. You know, you're still loved and appreciated. So I, I think for all those reasons, I think he stays. Um, I do hear he has a pretty good relationship with Mitch Barnhart. Uh, but Barnhart, I think, has turned 65 this year. So uh, he's not going to be there forever. Uh, those are my thoughts. Um, that, that's uh, my take on it as of right now. Ashley, and this is just me from knowing him for as long as I have, and you've known him longer. Um, it just doesn't seem like he's the kind of guy who would do this twice in one off season. Like had Louisville not been open and Kentucky was open, then I maybe would be a little more concerned. But the fact that Louisville's already gone down this road, I think that's, that's where maybe Kentucky has hit the wall if they really want Scott Drew. Yeah, maybe. I, you know, I, I think that, the timing's probably fortunate for Baylor. Um, you know, if I'm being totally honest, I think if the Kentucky job had come open first, um, then I would be a little bit more concerned. But but I do think that, you know, since he his agent did a good job of, of lobbying for the things that he wanted uh, going forward, and those were agreed to, I think I think Baylor's done everything they possibly can uh, to to you know show him he's loved and appreciated and keep him happy. Um, if it's always been a dream of his to coach at Kentucky, then, you know, so be it. I, I don't, I've never heard anyone close to him or, or him verbalize that at all. So, um, you know, I, th I think it's, uh, you know, it's a job that's at the top end of college basketball, no question about it. But, um, you know, Baylor has become that job thanks to him as well. So, I, you know, I think uh, Baylor really has a lot of advantages over Kentucky and, and Kentucky has some advantages over Baylor. But uh, when you look at, you know, the big question is, can you compete for national championships at Baylor? And I think the answer has been yes. He's proven that. And the answer is yes going forward. Well, they've been better recently. I know the history of Kentucky basketball. It's like the Yankees or the Lakers yeah. or whoever. So, But in, in the last several years, uh, last handful of years, Baylor has been better straight up. Uh, what does it say? Every time, I mean, Louisville was a once blue blood, and they have their history too. Scott Drew's name pops up. Indiana, Scott Drew's name pops up. You name a, a, a program, Scott Drew. Um, and, and it makes sense. Is it respect for Scott Drew, or is there maybe also at the same time somewhat of a people don't quite understand what he does have here in Waco? Yeah, I think it's both. I, you know, I think that I don't think people understand how great of a game changer this Foster Pavilion is. 
you know, and, and I think there's some, it would be hard if I'm putting myself in Scott Drew's shoes, you know, he did such a good job of getting the support to build that arena. And, you know, I know that part of that was, you know, giving assurances that he's here for the long haul. Um, and I, it would be tough to, you know, to, to look those people in the eye, I think, at that, that point, you know, to, and then to leave for another college job. Uh, the landscape's changed. I mean, it's changed quickly. But I do think, you know, Baylor's being very proactive. They're doing everything they can do to be competitive in that landscape. And, um, you know, from everything I've heard, I, I would I would have a pretty high level of confidence, not 100% confidence. I, I put it on the message boards, 90% confidence that it stays at Baylor. Have you uh, at least spoken to some of others that are deep into the program, donors, et cetera, and, and what they're saying? And and by the way, that's one, that one of them is you. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think that, you know, everybody um, who has, you know, put up financial resources to support Baylor basketball and, and many way more than I, I have for sure. Um, you know, they, they feel that, you know, I mean, a debt to Scott Drew and, you know, they've, they've put their money where their mouth is and, and, you know, stepped up their giving, you know, as, as a testament to what he's done and, you know, believe in, you know, that he's going to be here, you know, going forward, you, you know, all marriages end in death or divorce. So, I mean, if you want to put that analogy out there, you know, I think eventually there's going to be a day when Scott Drew isn't the coach of Baylor. And hopefully it's it, it's in a glorious retirement ceremony and not because he chose another job or, or not because things went south. But, um, you know, I think that uh, ideally for, for him and for the Baylor fan base, it's, it's a, a happy ending, you know, uh, honoring him for the incredible career he's had. And, and hopefully that's many years into the future. Ashley, um, this also kind of comes at uh, the wrong time in that they are uh, right now into the recruiting season. They've got to get in the portal. They've got to get what they want. We don't know what their we don't know what their um, you know what their roster is really completely going to look like. So the quicker this gets over, the better, right? Yeah, I I, I do think that um, you know it would be it would be to his advantage. Uh, and the program's advantage if, if he's not considering it to shut it down quickly. Um, you know, I do think there'll be um, a lot of, you know, positives to that, you know, and, and, and it's fighting for the guys in the portal that he needs and wants. Uh, but I, I also think that, you know, in the past, um, you know, knowing him, he was a guy that wanted to get his roster set the quicker, the better. And I think he's now a little bit more comfortable with, with waiting on some guys through the N NBA draft process. Uh, so I don't think he's in a huge hurry. I mean, I, I, you see how many incredibly talented guys are in the portal, and I think Baylor's going to, you know, be able to choose some incredible options uh, and and get what they need, you know, to really form a, a, a competitive top ten roster next year. Um, you know, so you know, I, I think, but it, it would be helpful, especially for some of the the top targets that they're they're chasing right now, if if he, you know made some assurances, uh, at least privately. I'm sure he would do that. But um, even publicly, I think it would be probably a, a good thing. Ashley Hodge with us, Sikkim 365 basketball analyst. Uh, as we talk about the story with Kentucky now open, John Calipari headed to Arkansas. And what could that mean for Scott Drew? Ashley, um, do you have any idea on, on some of the, the transfers they might be looking at? I, I've heard Cliff Amore's mm -hmm. name uh, – from Rutgers, and, and he's a guy that I think fits Baylor extremely well. Um, you know, I think that he's they, – they've missed a defensive shot-blocking big, you know, since really Freddie Gillespie. Freddie was terrific at that. Uh, and then you have to go back to, like, Epe Udo until they really had somebody that was elite, that had the athleticism and the mindset, uh, you know, to, to be a, a great defender uh, at that position. So Cliff Amore would, would, would come – as you know, one of the top defenders and the post defenders in college basketball, he's proven that at Rutgers. I think Baylor can improve his offensive game tremendously. Uh, so that's that's a name to keep an eye on. Um, other than that, I think that you know probably some of the better guards are are probably going to uh, put their name in the portal later. Um, you know, maybe go through the NBA draft process first. And you know, I, I think Baylor would be in a good position to grab you know an impact player. Uh, there as well. Um, 
my wish list is a guy like a Royce O'Neal or Ish Wainwright. You know, I think if you get a guy like that, a glue guy that also has playmaking skills that can make threes, um, that is just so valuable in today's game. You know, a guy like Williams at Texas Tech would, would you know, uh, be someone that I'm that I'm thinking about. You know, they can switch one through five and and also you know be be a great rebounder, glue guy type. Um, you know, so I, I'm sure they're looking for those guys, and I'm sure they have a list. Uh, that they're working down, but uh, those are the those are the names that I would throw out right now. So your thoughts? Uh, we have discussed Scott Drew and uh, the, his future with uh, what's going on at Kentucky. Arkansas had an opening when Musselman went to USC. Um, Jerome Tang's name was hot and heavy. In fact, there were even thoughts that that was imminent, and then it wasn't. It looked like Kansas State Gene uh, Taylor and the Wildcats stepped up with him. How close do you think was that true that he could end up in Fayetteville? Yeah, no, I, I think there was some smoke there for sure. You know, and I think, you know, obviously if Scott did leave, I'm, I'm not expecting him to leave, uh, but Jerome Tang's name would, would be, uh, you know, heavy in the mix at Baylor. You know, I, you know, I don't know if he would leave Kansas State for Baylor, but he certainly has a lot of great history here. You know, McCaslin is, is another name that comes to mind, and even, even John Jacobs, you know, mm-hmm. I think is really highly regarded. Uh, so from the Drew coaching tree, you know, those are those are some names to think about. Um, I wouldn't just totally dismiss the possibility of a Kelvin Sampson. You know, you talk about relationships mattering. And, Mac, you know, Rose. Mac Rose obviously yeah. has a great relationship with Kelvin. And if you could, you know, have a similar deal where you kind of, uh, you know, set up the sun to take over. I think Kelvin's 67 or 68 maybe. So he's he's up there. But he's got some good years left. And, and uh, you know, I mean, those are all thoughts. But, uh you know, whether, whether, whether Kelvin would, you know, even consider that, you know, Houston to Baylor, who knows, but, um, you know, I do think that, uh, you know, those are some thoughts off the top of my head. By the way, you don't know this, but, uh, cause it was on the weekend, but our fourth year of this show, fourth year from April 6th of 2020, remember we oh, yeah. were broadcasting from Paul's house and then yeah, moved into this beautiful state of the art facility in, uh, what, September uh, and we thank you and Brian and Colt and everyone that made this happen, man. We wouldn't be here without you. We appreciate you for doing that. Well, it's a virtuous flywheel. You guys are great, and uh, you brought a lot to our community and continue to do so. So thank you for all the hard work you all put into it. Ashley Hodge, basketball analyst, huge Baylor basketball uh, uh, analyst, and also insider. He's a booster. He does go around the at times whenever they're flying to, to tournaments, et cetera. And, of course, one of the owners of this great show and site with us to talk Scott Drew.